Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. This is gonna be our first urgent update of 2024, so we now have an enhanced risk for severe weather for the potential of 3-inch hail, strong tornadoes, as well as 70 mile an hour winds. Let's not waste any more time and go right into the video. So here is your new day three outlook from the SPC for, of course, April 25th. This is going to be for Thursday. We've got a marginal one, slight risk two, and an enhanced risk level three out of five for severe weather. Make sure you're hyper weather aware if you're in inside any of those shaded areas. And of course, this is driven by a 30 significant chance for severe weather. That means every 25 miles of a given point within that 30% area, you have a 30% chance of seeing significant severe weather. Now, what's very unique about this update is it is a amend update. Basically, this is an urgent update by the SPC. So they've actually done this at 19Z, which is not on a schedule for any other day one through eight outlooks here. So this is an amend update. Again, basically just meaning it was an unscheduled update. Uh, and again, this isn't really that rare, to be honest. Like we see this a couple times per year. Um, it, it is something that you want to note for sure. If we see that urgent update, it means something big's going down or is about to go down. But what's really, really interesting about this outlook is the wording. So before we were we're talking about the potential for isolated large hail and isolated damaging winds and maybe uh, a tornado or two being a possibility. We've, we've thrown that out the window. I mean, we've completely put it into the trash can at this point because now we're talking about the potential for, get this, three inch hail. Uh, right there as well as 70 mile an hour winds and if we go down further here strong to intense tornadoes being a possibility if the storms can remain discreet which basically means if storms can remain by themselves for multiple hours on end. Before we dive on into the model runs, I want to show you guys the SPC's day 4 through 8 outlook as we have this still a large slight risk 15% chance every 25 miles of a given point for severe weather being a possibility. This is going to be for Friday, April 26th. Then into day 5, April 27th, which is going to be Saturday, another 15% chance for severe weather being a possibility. This one's going to be out for portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, even Arkansas. And then we could go on into day 6. We've got another large area slight risk for severe weather. This is going to be for Sunday, April 28th. 8th, of course, 2024. All of these will have the risk for severe weather, as you know, but not only that, every last one of them should have the risk for an all hazards threat, meaning large hail damaging winds and multiple tornadoes will be a possibility with all three. And I should actually include, of course, our enhanced risks. So all four of these days for severe weather. Let's go ahead and dive on into the model runs. But before we look at the model runs, go ahead and share this video with your family, friends, social media. Hit that like button to help spread weather awareness and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Again, please share this as it is going to be crucial that we get the word out about this severe weather update. Let's go ahead and continue with today's video. Starting out with the 500 millibar wind speeds like we normally do here is going to be April 25th. Thursday, of course, 2024. We've got a negatively tilted trough ejection out here towards the eastern four corners area. Again, this is going to be the potential for significant severe weather right in the exit region of that trough, which should be positioned over Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma. It's going to be really the main area to watch where, we, of course, we have that enhanced risk for severe weather. And then we can pull this on into Friday the 26th. You can see that continues on into the central plains. So we will have yet another large scale risk for severe weather and probably even a localized area of significant severe weather being a possibility for the 26th. Moving on on into the 27th, we've got another negatively tilted short wave, or I should rather say negatively tilted trough ejection with multiple uh, embedded short waves inside that trough. So this will be yet another potential for significant severe weather out in that exit region of the trough, which will be pretty much focused over the exact same area. Uh, but this time, of course, for the 27th, which is going to be Saturday. So make sure you guys are hyper weather aware. If you are inside that 15% chance for severe weather, which again is going to be for Saturday. Then we move on into the 28th for Sunday. You can see that moves on right into the same exact area for Sunday, this time April 28th. Another chance for severe weather and as well as significant severe weather being a possibility. Then we can move on into Sunday or rather Monday and uh, oh look at that it actually fizzles out. Hey so we should be pretty much clear from uh, severe weather at least on the northern edge of this system for Monday. However you might not have been able to see it because I did go a little bit quick but we're going to have a chance for severe weather. We're going to use supercell composite to show you this. On Monday, out here towards 
towards Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, uh, maybe even Oklahoma and Mississippi. So we'll be watching that for Monday. But predictability is all over the place. So we don't have any highlighted areas for severe weather for that just yet. Now we could go ahead and move on into the instability. And um, yeah, I don't know if I really need to show this because uh, instability is just not an issue for this threat for severe weather. Now, what is an issue is the capping. That's going to be probably our number one factor for the majority of these days is when will that cap break and how strong will that capping be? Basically, the capping is going to be a lid over the atmosphere. And if you have that lid over the atmosphere, storms are going to try to grow upscale and then they're just going to be cut off. So think of it, actually, think of it like wind shear to a hurricane. It's going to be completely obliterated if a hurricane hits wind shear. Same goes for this atmosphere. If you have instability and you have that capping, the instability is just going to be blown away. It's not going to do anything because that capping is going to be in place. And by the way, the instability won't literally be blown away. It was a metaphor. <laughs> uh, so now let's go ahead and look at our lower level jet here. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of lower level jet. I mean, once again, really the only limiting factor here is going to be uh, really two things, which the SPC already mentioned. One, the storm mode. How long will those storms be discrete? And the major one, in my opinion, which is how strong will that capping be? So we'll see if this ends up being another uh, capping underperforming risk, and we'll see if we end up with another significant severe weather uh, chance here, which again, we already have an enhanced risk, which means significant severe weather's on the table. Uh, it's just a matter of what plays out, and of course, we'll see that on Thursday, which again, we'll be live here. Uh, by the time you're seeing this video, we'll be live in 50 minutes. We're going live at 5.50 Eastern time, so hopefully I'll see you guys over there. I really don't feel the need to be looking at all these products because there's just an absurd amount of ingredients in place. I mean, the only thing, like I said, that's really stopping this environment wise is the capping. And then of course, uh, which this isn't the environment, but the storm mode. So those are really the two main things here. I mean, your dew points, uh, everything's just off the charts here. Everything's not going to be, um, I mean, it really, I don't see a solid bust mode, uh, except for that capping. I mean, you've got temperatures, of course, uh, you have dew points, you have plenty of of mid-level uh, wind shear. You've got your lower level jet in place. Uh, your EHI. I mean, I don't under I don't expect you guys to understand all this stuff, but basically, long story short, we've got a very favorable environment for severe weather. It's just a matter of if these storms are able to fire in it and become discreet or not, which again, uh, in regards to them firing, that's going to be based off of that capping and how strong that capping is. And we'll see how long they remain by themselves and stay discreet. So here's the WPC's forecast. This has become one of my most favorite things to look at just because it's so useful. So this is for tonight. Uh, we're really not going to see a whole lot of cross country as opposed to the potential for an isolated supercell out there, which you can barely see it on your screen out there in Texas. And that would mainly be the potential for large hail around the realms of two inch in diameter. And then as we go overnight, there's not going to be a whole lot to speak of. And then Wednesday, I mean, we don't get a lot Wednesday either, uh, which is of course going to be tomorrow. Still, maybe an isolated supercell or two with very large hail, uh, but nothing over the top until we go into uh, Friday here. Really, uh, Friday is when it starts to kick off uh, because we're, of course, going to go Thursday night into Friday. Uh, so, I mean, you could see a ridiculous setup. You've got a low pressure with a dry line and a warm front. So anything that can latch on into that very, very favorable environment out here is going to have a really good shot at significant severe weather. But the potential for severe weather is probably going to go all the way up into portions of South Dakota um, and of course into Nebraska as well. So the area for severe weather will be very widespread, but the area for concentrated significant severe weather should be focused over the panhandle of Texas as well as the panhandle of Oklahoma. That's why I think the main area is going to be, uh, which again is going to be right, probably right out in front of that dry line. So that's where the best shot for an all hazards of significant uh, severe weather will be a possibility. Then we move on into Friday. This is actually going to be Friday um, afternoon here. It becomes more widespread. I mean, this is just going to be ridiculous to watch unfold. You're going to have a classic a low pressure look to this system. I mean, look at this. Like, literally on their graphic, you can see the low pressure angle of this storm system just based off of the rain of their outlook. That is crazy. And then Saturday, it kind of falls apart. But again, I think we'll still have a severe threat present, um, of course, in the southern portion of the system. But probably even some isolated severe weather being a possibility on the northern side. But it shouldn't be anything 
anything over the top. Uh, Saturday's main focus is going to be out there towards that slight risk for severe weather, uh, which we already showed. And then Sunday, it's going to push eastward. Um, again, we're, we already have a slight risk for severe weather, so it's probably going to be another big day for severe weather. And then Monday, uh, well, just like I said, I think we're going to be watching uh, more of on the southern end of this um, out here for severe weather potential, which, oops, you guys can't see that. There you go. Uh, out here uh, is where I think we'll be watching the most for severe weather on Monday. So thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. Please share it as this was a urgent update, uh, first urgent update for us on 2024. And I uh, hope to see you guys in the live stream in about 50 minutes. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Watch severe weather. Goodbye.